Hello, my name is Boris Colombari. I'm a PhD student at Ex Marseille University, and I will talk about the classification of welded links and welded spring links up to WQ concordance. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this seminar for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to present my results. This is much appreciated. This talk will be divided into three parts. First, I will uh, present some existing results on classical links involving the notions of class series and concordance of links. We will then adapt uh, these notions and the relevant invariants to welded objects. We will define welded links and welded string links, as well as their representation by Gauss diagrams. Finally, I will describe a version of our calculus, which was developed by Jean-Baptiste Meillan and Akira Yatuara, and which I will use to give elements of the proofs on my results, namely that welded string links are classified up to WQ concordance by their mean law invariants, and welded links are classified up to WQ concordance by their unipotent peripheral system. In the first part, uh, I will start by defining the peripheral system of a link, and then I will show how it can be used uh, to obtain its mean law invariance. I will then introduce uh, the concept of Clasper surgeries on links, which was developed by Kazuo Habiro, with the corresponding notions of CK equivalence and CK concordance. And finally, I will present the classification of links which are CK concordant to the end link, which was obtained by James Conant Rob Schneiderman and Peter Teichner using the notion of Wigley Towers. So first, I will introduce some uh, algebraic notions which I will use throughout the talk. So in a group G uh, with elements A and B in G, we will denote by A and B in brackets the commutator of A and B, which by convention would be A inverse B inverse A B. And we also denote by A to the B the conjugate of A by B, which would be B, in B inverse a, B. Then for uh, subsets A and B and G, we will denote by A and B in brackets the normal subgroup of G generated by uh, commutators of elements of A with elements of B. And with this, we can define uh, the lower central series uh, of the group G, which will be a sequence of normal subgroups uh, denoted by gamma Q of G, uh, which are defined by induction of Q as follows. We start by uh, gamma 1 of G, which is the group G itself, and then gamma Q plus 1 of G uh, is the normal subgroup generated by commutators of elements of G uh, with uh, elements of gamma Q of G. In particular, the uh, subgroup gamma Q of G will contain and in fact be generated by uh, iterated commutators of weight Q or higher on elements of G. Finally, uh, we'll denote by NQ of G the Q nilpotent quotient of the group G which is defined as the quotient of G by the normal subgroup gamma Q of G. So I will now define the peripheral system of a link. So for a link L in S3 with n components uh, L1 through Lm, we have an associated group uh, GL, which uh, is defined as the fundamental group of its exterior. And the peripheral system uh, of L will be this group together with uh, meridians and longitudes uh, of the components. So for example, here we have a meridian of the first component, which is uh, the boundary of a small disk, which is positively transverse to the component at one point. And uh, the longitude can be seen as a loop which runs parallel to the component, uh, with the added condition that it must have a zero leaking number with the component. So here the longitude winds around uh, the component in order to make sure that the linking number vanishes. Now, meridians and longitudes can be seen as elements of the group GL, and in the usual vertical presentation of this group, each meridian is one of the generators, the generator associated to the arc on the diagram, and each longitude is uh, the product of the conjugated elements in the vertical relation associated to the undercrossings on the component. Now, if we take the q nilpotent quotient of the group GL, we obtain the following chain Milner presentation. So we have uh, one generator per component. So the generators here are the chosen meridians of the link. And uh, in the relations, we have first the set of iterated commutators of weight Q or higher on the generator, since we are taking the q nilpotent quotient. And also uh, the commutation of each uh, meridian with its longitude. Now we will denote uh, by Li of Q the image of the longitude Li in this group, and we'll call them uh, Q longitudes. Uh, 
And here, since the uh, meridians generate the cumulipotent quotient, uh, the, longitude, the Q longitudes can be expressed as words uh, on the meridians. And we will use uh, this presentation uh, in order to obtain the uh, middle invariance of the link L. In order to do this, uh, we will need the following Magnus expansion, which is defined uh, as a group homomorphism on the free group uh, with n generators into the uh, multiplicative group of uh, the formal power series with integer coefficients on n uh, non commutating variables. So the multiplicative uh, group of this uh, algebra is simply the power series with a uh, constant term equal to plus or minus 1. And the Magnus expansion is defined as uh, sending each uh, generator mi to the power series uh, 1 plus xi. And its inverse uh, will be sent to the inverse power series 1 minus xi plus xi squared minus xi cubed and so on. Now uh, we'll denote by uh, x the ideal generated by the uh, variables x1 uh, through xn. And then uh, x to the k will be the ideal of the power series with monomials of degree q or higher. And it's not difficult to check that the Magnus expansion will send uh, iterated commutators of weight q uh, to uh, power series of the form uh, 1 plus uh, uh, monomials of degree q or higher, so elements of uh, 1 plus x to the q. And as a result, we obtain an induced uh, homomorphism, the induced Magnus expansion, from the q nilpotent quotient of the free group to the quotient of the multiplicative group by uh, the normal subgroup 1 plus x cubed. So in other words, if we uh, only take uh, elements of the free group up to uh, iterated commutators of weight q or higher, then uh, we will obtain power series which are well defined up to uh, monomials of degree q minus 1. So now we uh, define the Milnor invariance of uh, the link L by taking the images of the q longitudes uh, by the induced Magnus expansion. If we do this, uh, we obtain a uh, power series of the form 1 plus uh, some monomials uh, up to degree q minus 1. And we denote by uh, mu i of L the coefficients of this power series, where i is a sequence of indices i1 through ik j, where i1 through ik correspond to the uh, variables in the monomials, and j corresponds to the q longitude. Now, however, since we are taking the q longitudes in a group uh, with uh, some additional relations compared to the cumulative quotient, quotient of the free group. Uh, we also have the commutation of the meridian uh, with the longitudes. And because of this, uh, the uh, coefficient mu i of L are uh, only well defined up to some indeterminacy. More precisely, the coefficient mu i of L is well defined uh, modulo the GCD of some uh, mu j of L with uh, length of j less than length of r. And once uh, we take uh, these uh, coefficients modulo the previous ones, we obtain uh, what are called the Milnor mu bar invariants of L, which are well defined as uh, invariants of links. So I will now introduce the notion of uh, Clasper calculus, which describes uh, surgeries on links induced by claspers. So a basic Clasper C is an embedded surface, which is the union of two annually uh, joined by a band, as illustrated here. And the surgery uh, induced by such a clasper on a link will clasp uh, two strands together, hence the name clasper. Now we will uh, more generally uh, consider tree shaped claspers, where three bands uh, can meet at a node, as illustrated here. And uh, the bands and the nodes of such a clasper will uh, retract on an underlying uh, unitrivalent tree with uh, one edge for each band one uh, vertex of degree 3 for each node, and one vertex of uh, degree 1 uh, for each uh, annulus at the extremities of the clasper. Now we can uh, obtain a family of basic claspers by replacing uh, each node by three uh, annuli, which are linked like four main links. And the surgery induced by a tree-shaped clasper is then defined as the surgery induced by this family uh, of basic claspers. We define uh, the degree of clasper as uh, the number of nodes plus one. And we can then define the notion of CK equivalence. We say that two links are CK equivalent 
if they differ by a finite sequence of surgeries on three classes of degree k or i. And we'll also need the notion of concordance of links. So we say that two links L and L prime in S3 with n components are concordant uh, if they co-bound uh, this joint union of properly embedded annually A1 through An in S3 times the unit interval. Now we can define the notion of uh, CK concordance. We say that two links are CK concordant if they differ by a finite sequence of CK equivalences and concordance. We have the uh, following description of concordance uh, on diagrams that we will need uh, when extending the notion of concordance to welded objects, which are defined directly uh, on diagrams. So first, uh, cobordism between two links can be described on diagrams in terms of births, deaths, and saddle. So a birth is uh, the creation of a trivial uh, component, and a death is the deletion of such a component. And uh, saddle consists in fusing two uh, components to each other, or alternatively, uh, separating a component into two, as uh, illustrated here. And now we have the characterization of uh, concordance among cobordism. Uh, cobordism will be a concordance if and only if uh, each component uh, involves as many births and deaths as saddles. This can be seen by computing the regular characteristic of the underlying surface of the cobordism, as uh, each birth and, and death will increase the regular characteristic by one, and each saddle will decrease it by one. Now, using the concept of Whitney Towers, uh, James Conant, Rob Schneiderman, and Peter Tackner obtained a classification of links which are CK concordant to the unlink. So, uh, I will not go into too much details about uh, Whitney Towers as they will not appear in the classification of welded objects. I will only give uh, some general ideas. So the purpose of a Whitney Tower is to attempt to remove singularities of a properly immersed surface in V4 in order to uh, obtain an embedded surface. So we have, if we have a link in S3 and a homotopy uh, to the unlink, we obtain an immersed surface into V4 uh, with uh, singularities. And when capped uh, by disks, this becomes a properly immersed surface. And by building Whitney towers on this surface, we obtain uh, obstruction to uh, turning it into an embedded surface, which could give a concordance to the unlink. Now, these uh, obstructions are obtained by recording the relevant information of Whitney towers in a family of unit equivalent trees with the same notion of degree as for tree class books. And we define the degree of a Whitney tower as the smallest degree of the uh, associated unit equivalent trees. Now, the, notion, uh, the notions of Clasper concordance and Whitney towers are closely related, as illustrated by the following proposition. So, a link uh, in S3 will bound a Whitney tower with associated trees uh, T1 through Tn if and only if it is Clasper concordant to the end link uh, with the same trees uh, associated to the surgeries uh, on the Clasper. Finally, we have the following theorem. Uh, for an integer k and the link L in S3, the following statements are equivalent. First, L is uh, CK concordant to the end link, and L uh, bounds a Whitney tower of degree k. And finally, uh, L has vanishing Milnor, Satolevin, and Arf invariants of order less than k. Now, these uh, invariants are obtained uh, from the family of unit equivalent trees associated to uh, Whitney tower. Here, the Milnor invariants are the ones I defined before, and I will not uh, go into details about the Sato Levin and Arf invariants as they will not appear in the classification of welded objects. Now, the goal for the rest of the talk will be to obtain uh, similar results on welded objects for a suitable uh, notion of Clasper concordance for these objects. I will now introduce uh, welded links and welded string links, first defined as virtual diagrams up to some local moves then represented by ghost diagrams. We we'll then extend uh, the notion of peripheral system and Milnor invariants to welded objects. And finally, I will present a version of error calculus, which describes surgeries on virtual diagrams and will be used in the proof of my results. A virtual diagram is defined in the same way as a classical diagram, but uh, with a new type of crossing. So we have uh, positive crossing and negative crossing 
as in the classical case, depending on the orientation of the strands. And we have a new type of crossing called virtual crossing, represented uh, here on the right. Uh, we will also consider uh, virtual string link diagrams. So uh, string links have uh, interval components, which go from uh, the bottom to the top. And each component joins uh, one point at the bottom to the corresponding point uh, at the top, and there is no uh, permutation of the extremities. So similarly to the case of diagrams on uh, classical links, we have uh, local moves on virtual diagrams. So first we have the usual three uh, right master moves, R1, R2, and R3. Then we have uh, similar moves uh, involving uh, virtual crossings instead of classical ones. So VR1, VR2, and VR3. We also have the mixed move, which allows us to pass a strand with two virtual crossings uh, through a classical crossing. Now, up to these local moves, we would obtain uh, what is called uh, virtual links and virtual string links. And in order to obtain welded objects, we need to allow uh, one more move, the OC move, or over commute, uh, which allows us to pass a strand uh, above a virtual crossing. However, we are not allowed to pass a strand uh, under a virtual crossing. So we will use a slightly more combinatorial description of weighted objects by ghost diagrams, which consists in representing uh, the position of the pre-images of the classical crossings on the components. For example, here we have uh, the virtual diagram of a string link on three components, and uh, on the right, the corresponding ghost diagram with the three uh, vertical components and uh, signed arrows, uh, which represents uh, the classical crossing. For example, uh, this arrow on the left corresponds to this crossing here. Uh, the tail of the arrow indicates the position of the upper prey image of the crossing, and the head of the arrow indicates the position of the lower prey image. And uh, each arrow is labeled by a sign indicating whether uh, it is a positive uh, crossing or negative one. Now note that uh, the virtual crossings are not represented on ghost diagrams. And in fact, the purpose of the virtual crossings is to ensure that uh, every ghost diagram comes from a virtual diagram. Now, the local moves on uh, virtual diagrams induce local moves on uh, ghost diagrams. So we have the R1 move, which consists in uh, deleting or adding uh, an arrow with uh, its two extremities next to each other on a strand. Then the R2 move uh, consists in adding or deleting two parallel arrows uh, with opposite signs. Then we have the R3 move. And finally, uh, the OC move consists in permuting the position uh, of two adjacent tails on the component. And note that uh, the other moves, uh, VR1, VR2, VR3, and the mixed move have no effect on ghost diagrams. So as in the classical case, we will associate a group GL to a welded link or welded string link L. And this group will be given by a virtual representation, which can be obtained from a ghost diagram representation as follows. So since uh, each arrow head corresponds to an undercrossing, we will have uh, one generator uh, for each interval in between two arrow heads and one conjugating relation uh, for each arrow. More precisely, uh, passing through the head of an arrow will have the effect of conjugating uh, by the generator uh, corresponding to uh, the strand which uh, contains the tail of the arrow, or by the inverse of this generator if uh, the sign of the arrow is negative. And uh, by taking the Kunil potent quotient of this group GL, we obtain a similar chain minor presentation as uh, we had before. So uh, in the case of a welded link L, we have uh, meridians and longitudes, and we obtain the same uh, chain minor presentation with the meridians as a generator, and uh, the iterated uh, commutators of weight Q or higher in the relations, as well as the commutation of each meridian with its longitude. In the case of a welded string link L, uh, since the components are not closed, there is no uh, commutation relation between the meridians and the longitudes, so we have uh, only the meridians as generators and the iterated commutators of weight Q or higher as relations. So in this case, uh, the cunipotent quotient of GL is simply uh, the cunipotent quotient of the free group on n generators. And note that uh, in the case of a, a welded string link, uh, 
the meridians are by default chosen as the generators corresponding to the bottom arcs of the components. So there is no choice uh, in this case. In the classification of welded links, we will use uh, cunipotent peripheral systems as invariants. However, uh, there is an indeterminacy coming from the choice of meridians. And so to remove uh, this indeterminacy, we introduce an equivalence uh, relation on cunipotent peripheral systems as follows. Uh, we say that uh, the cunipotent peripheral systems of two welded links L and L prime are equivalent if there exists an isomorphism uh, phi from NQGL to NQGL prime and elements uh, GI such that uh, phi will send the meridians MI uh, of L conjugated by GI to the meridian uh, MI prime of L prime and also the longitude LI of uh, L conjugated by GI to the uh, longitude LI prime of L prime. And these uh, elements uh, GI corresponds to uh, the change of a choice of meridians on a diagram. Changing uh, the meridians will have the effect of conjugating the meridians and the longitude by the same elements. Now, up to this uh, equivalence uh, relation, the cunipotent peripheral system become invariants of welded links. Now, for the classification of welded string links, we will use uh, minor invariants, which are defined in the same way uh, as in the classical case. So we take uh, the images of the Q longitudes by the induced Magnus expansion. However, since there is no commutation relation between uh, the meridians and the longitudes, uh, the coefficients mu i of L are actually well defined as integers and are called the Milnor invariants of length uh, less than or equal to Q uh, of uh, the welded string link L. Now, now we will use the fact that the induced Magnus expansion is injective uh, to obtain that the uh, uh, Q longitudes are completely characterized uh, by their images uh, by the mag induced Magnus expansion. So in fact, they are completely characterized by the Milnor invariance of length uh, less than or equal to Q. We will use this fact uh, for the classification of welded string links. I will now introduce uh, the notion of arrow calculus, which is an analog of Clasper calculus on welded objects. So arrow calculus was developed by Jean-Baptiste Meillard and Akira Yasuhara and consists in describing surgeries on virtual diagrams by arrows. So for example, here we have an arrow between two strands of a virtual diagram, and the induced uh, surgery consists in clasping one of the strands around the other. However, here, instead of having two classical crossings, we have one classical crossing and one virtual crossing. And their relative position depends on the orientation of the strand uh, containing the tail of the arrow. In the case of Clasper calculus, we had surgeries along uh, basic claspers, which generalized to surgeries along uh, tree-shaped claspers. And here, similarly, uh, surgeries along arrows will generalize to surgeries along oriented unit equivalent trees. Now note that the uh, representation of surgeries by arrows is very close to the representation of uh, welded objects by Gauss diagrams, as uh, this classical crossing here would be represented on a Gauss diagram by uh, the same arrow. As a result, uh, we can easily uh, adapt the representation of surgeries uh, on virtual diagrams by unit equivalent trees to uh, the representation of uh, welded objects by Gauss diagrams. And all the local moves for unit driven trees on virtual diagrams uh, will give uh, local moves for unit driven trees on Gauss diagrams. So for example, here we have a unit trivalent tree uh, on a Gauss diagram with univalent vertices uh, on the components, one of them uh, being the head of the tree, and all the others are the tails. And each edge is labeled by a sign, and we define uh, the degree uh, of a unit driven tree as the number of tails which is uh, also equal to the number of uh, trivalent vertices plus one. So we obtain uh, the same uh, notion of degree as we had for tree claspers. Now, a unit trivalent tree will represent a family of arrows, which can be obtained by uh, iteratively expanding the tree as follows. To expand a unit trivalent tree uh, with two subtrees T1 and T2 and a positive sign on the last edge, uh, we create copies of uh, T1 and T2 as follows, so we have a copy of T1 with the same sign, then a copy of T2 with opposite sign, then a copy of T1 with opposite sign, and finally, a copy of T2 with the same sign. 
Now the right master how to move, which consists in deleting two parallel arrows with uh, opposite sign, we generalize to uh, unit driven trees in the sense that two parallel copies of a tree with opposite sign on the last edge can be cancelled out. As a result, uh, these copies of T1 with opposite sign can be seen as uh, inverse of each other. And by expanding the tree, we obtain uh, the commutator of the subtrees T1 and T2, more precisely, the commutator of the inverse of T1 with T2. And if we have a negative sign on the last edge, we obtain the inverse commutator of the two subtrees. Now, by iterating this process, we uh, eventually obtain a family of arrows, and we identify a, a unit driven tree by uh, the associated family of arrows. And as a result, a unit driven tree on the Gauss diagram can be seen as an iterated commutator of arrows. Now, the presentation of the group GL can be adapted to diagrams with unit driven trees. Uh, by propagating the generators uh, around the tree from the tails up to the head to obtain the conjugating elements. So if we have a generator uh, on a strand uh, containing one of the tails of the tree, we propagate this generator uh, around the edge, taking its inverse if there is a negative sign on the edge. Then at, at each uh, prevalent vertex of the tree, uh, we take the commutator of the two uh, generators. And finally, when we arrive at the head of the tree, we obtain uh, the conjugating element, which uh, will be equal to the product of the conjugating elements associated uh, to the family of arrows obtained by expanding the tree. Now, by this construction, uh, the conjugating elements corresponding to a tree of degree k will be an iterated commutator of weight k, and as a result, uh, trees of degree q uh, or higher will have no impact uh, on the group NQGL since these uh, iterated commutators are trivial in the q newton quotient. So now we can define the notion of WQ equivalence. We say that two-weighted objects are WQ equivalent if they differ by surgeries along uh, unit driven trees of degree Q or higher, which on Gauss diagrams correspond to adding or deleting such trees. Now using the diagrammatical characterization of concordance in terms of births, deaths, and saddles, uh, we can extend uh, the notion of concordance to weighted objects which we will call uh, welded concordance. And now mirroring uh, the definition of uh, CK concordance, we say that two uh, welded objects are WQ concordance if they differ by a finite sequence of WQ equivalence and welded concordance. I can now state my results on the classification of WQ concordance on welded objects. So first we have uh, theorem one. The Milner invariants of length less than or equal to Q are complete invariants of WQ concordance on welded string links. And theorem two, the equivalence class of q nilpotent peripheral system is a complete invariant of WQ concordance on welded links. Here, I will uh, give elements of the proof of theorem one. The proof of theorem two will use uh, similar arguments. I will give some uh, remarks on the notable differences. I will also uh, only focus on the completeness part of these invariants, the fact that the Milner invariants and the equivalence class of cunipotent peripheral system are uh, invariants of welded concordance can be proved using the notion of cut diagrams on uh, the underlying surface of the concordance, where cut diagrams are a generalization of Gauss diagrams in higher dimension. And the fact that these are invariants of WQ equivalence follows directly from the fact that trees of degree Q or higher have no effect on the cunipotent quotient of the group. For the proof of theorem 1, we will consider a particular subclass of Gauss diagrams of welded string links. We say that a Gauss diagram is ascending if on each component the heads are positioned above the tails. So for example, here we have uh, an ascending diagram of a welded string links on three components, where for the sake of clarity the signs are omitted. Now, the advantage of dealing with an ascending diagram is that all the conjugating elements in the Wertinger relations will be meridians or their inverse. And as a result, uh, the longitudes can be read directly on the diagrams as walls uh, on the meridians. For example, here we have the meridians M1, M2, M3 at the bottom. And uh, for those signs on these arrows, uh, we have that the uh, longitude L2 will be uh, M3 inverse times M1, since here the uh, second meridian M2 is first uh, conjugated by uh, the inverse of M3 and then by M1. 
Now, the proof of theorem one will be divided into two steps. First, we will show that uh, every uh, Gauss diagram of a welded string link is uh, WQ concordant to an ascending diagram. And then uh, we will show that uh, two ascending diagrams with equal minor invariance of length uh, less than or equal to Q are uh, WQ equivalent. So for the first step, uh, we will prove the following proposition. Uh, any Gauss diagram is WQ concordant to an ascending diagram. So to obtain uh, an ascending diagram, we will push uh, the tails of the trees uh, below the heads using uh, local moves on unit equivalent trees, which were described by uh, Meyer and Yasuhara for trees on virtual diagrams, and which give similar moves for trees on Gauss diagrams. Now, these moves uh, will allow us to permute the position of two adjacent extremities of trees on a component at the cost of creating uh, additional trees of higher degree. But since we are considering Gauss diagrams up to WQ components, if we start with the trees of lower degree and go up, eventually the additional trees created by these moves will have a degree Q or higher and can then be uh, disregarded by uh, WQ equivalents. So first, uh, the OC move on Gauss diagrams, which allows us to permute uh, two adjacent tails of arrows on the component, uh, generalizes to uh, unitrivalent trees. And we are able to permute uh, two adjacent tails of trees uh, without creating any new tree. In order to permute two adjacent heads of uh, trees T1 and T2, uh, we need to create uh, an additional tree, which contains T1 and T2 as subtrees. This can easily be checked by expanding this uh, additional tree. In order to uh, permute uh, the head of a tree T1 with uh, a tail of a different tree T2, uh, once again, we create uh, an additional tree which contains T1 and T2 uh, subtrees, and also a family of uh, trees with even uh, higher degree. However, uh, this move cannot be used to permute the head of a tree with one of its tails, since here we need uh, T1 to be different from T2. In order to perform such a move, we will need to use a welded concordance on the diagram. And we will also uh, create uh, higher degree trees, which I will not represent on the following figures in order for them to remain uh, readable. So here we have a tree uh, T with its head uh, next to one of its tails and we want to push the tail uh, below the head. So we start by uh, creating an empty component next to the vertical one. And then using the generalized Redmaster 2 move, we create uh, two parallel copies of T on this component with uh, opposite signs on the last edge. I will report uh, this uh, configuration on the left here. Now from here, uh, we use uh, the previous moves to uh, permute the position of the head of the upper T with the tail of the lower T. So this will create uh, higher degree trees, which are not represented. Next, uh, we slide the T on the left uh, downwards, and also the tail of the upper T uh, here, before uh, performing a saddle move, which will attach the closed components uh, to the vertical one. Once again, I will re report this on the left. Now we perform the saddle move and uh, straighten out the component. Uh, we put this on the left here. Now, from here, uh, we once again use the previous moves to push the tail of the upper T uh, upwards until it's just below its head. And also, we permute uh, the position of the head of the middle T with the tail of the lower T to obtain this configuration. Now, from here, uh, we use the generalized Redmaster move to cancel out these two copies of T. And we are left with uh, one copy of T with the position of uh, its head and tail permuted. Now, using these moves, we can push the tails uh, below the heads of the trees on each component at the cost of creating uh, higher degree trees. But since we can delete uh, trees of degree uh, Q or higher by WQ equivalents, this process will terminate in a finite number of steps, and we are left with an ascending diagram. Now, for the second step, we will uh, prove the following proposition. Two ascending diagrams with equal minor invariance of length uh, less than or equal to Q are WQ equivalent. Here we will use uh, the injectivity of the induced Magnus expansion. As I said before, uh, this guarantees that the Q longitudes are completely characterized by the uh, minor invariance of length less than or equal to Q. And from this, we obtain that the two ascending diagrams 
have the same uh, Q-longitudes in the cunipotent quotient of the free group uh, generated by the meridians. And as a result, uh, the words uh, describing these longitudes, which can be read uh, directly on the ascending diagrams, will uh, only differ by uh, adding or deleting occurrences of mj, mj inverse, and uh, iterated commutators of weight q or higher, since uh, these are the reactions defining the cunipotent quotient of the free group. Now, these modifications uh, can be achieved on the diagrams by Rademaster R2 moves and uh, WQ equivalences by uh, adding or deleting suitable unit trigonometries of degree Q or higher. And this concludes uh, the proof of theorem 1. Now, the proof of theorem 2 uses uh, similar arguments with the special subclass of welded link diagrams being that of sorted diagrams, where each component is divided into two disjoint intervals one of them containing the heads and the other containing the tails. So once again, we separate uh, the heads from the tails. However, there are two notable differences from the proof of theorem one. The first is that uh, any Gauss diagram of a welded link is actually WQ equivalent to a sorted diagram. So here we do not need to use a welded concordance. This comes from the fact that uh, when separating the tails from the heads, we can choose uh, in which direction to push the tail and as a result, uh, we do not need to permute uh, the head of a tree with one of its tails, and this was the only move which required uh, welded concordance. And the second uh, difference is that uh, to relate uh, two sorted diagrams with the same invariance, we uh, do need uh, welded concordance, as opposed to the case of ascending diagrams, where we only needed a WQ equivalence. This comes from the fact that we have to take into account the additional uh, relations of commutation of each meridian with its longitude. So this is the end of the talk. I hope you found it interesting. I will soon have a paper on archive presenting these results in much more detail. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them in the comments. I will once again uh, thank the organizers of this seminar for the invitation, and I thank you for your attention.